clicked on to the most in-depth weather forecast video for the Mahoning and Shenango Valleys in Northeast Ohio and Western PA. This is weather for Weather Geeks. I'm 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm, and uh, this video is geared towards uh, not only the weather geeks out there, but those who just uh, like more detail in their forecasts and maybe need more detail in their forecasts, uh, depending on uh, what your profession is, uh, what your line of work is, maybe weather is really important to what you do day to day and you need more uh, information that you, you can get on an app or in a, a three or four minute weather cast on TV. We've been doing these videos every weekday or most weekdays for going on about 10 years now. So uh, hopefully uh, long time viewers have found a lot of value in these videos. And as we uh, wrap up the work week, uh, we're going to wrap up Severe Weather Awareness Week in the state of Ohio with a few more reminders this evening. But first, a quick look at today's numbers. It was chilly, it was cloudy, but as expected, it was dry for a lot of the daylight hours today, with the exception of extreme southern Columbiana County with a little pre-dawn rain this morning. But at the airport, 45, the best we can manage this afternoon. That's about 5 degrees cooler than the average. All right, again, we're wrapping up Severe Weather Awareness Week. In the state of Ohio, all week we've been talking about different aspects of severe weather. Tornadoes, flooding, hail, lightning, safety measures you can take. I wanted to kind of get back to a little bit of uh, basics here this evening. And, you know, when we're covering severe weather, we show a lot of maps. Our, our coverage is dominated by maps that look like this. And meteorologists and TV weather forecasters, we're real familiar with geography. Uh, we know maps like the back of our hand, we know counties really well, we know cities and highways and landmarks and things really well, but you know, kind of the, the general populace, if you will, is not as tuned into geography as, as we are, and we have to remember that sometimes when we're uh, covering severe weather, that just because you know which counties are which and where the major highways and things like that are, not everyone has that same level of knowledge. But we, we, our aspiration for the general public is for there to be just a baseline understanding of your local geography, what county you're in, what counties are adjacent to you, and kind of it's nice to know what major roads and highways go through your county. So when we're on the air calling out Interstate 80 or Route 30 or Route 11, or 422, things like that, uh, you know generally what we're talking about. And it's also, you know, kind of a, a nice thing to know which National Weather Service office issues the official watches and warnings for your location. If you live in Mahoning or Trumbull County, you're covered by the National Weather Service office in Cleveland, which covers most of Northern Ohio and a couple of counties in Northwest PA, Crawford and Erie. Uh, the rest of our viewing area is covered by the Pittsburgh National Weather Service office, Mercer, Lawrence, and Columbiana in our television market, covered by the Pittsburgh office, which covers several counties in, in East Central Ohio and Eastern Ohio and the Panhandle of West Virginia and a lot of Western PA, of course, as well. Uh, th this can be important, uh, you know, when you uh, maybe get a push alert on your device. Uh, it, maybe you're getting alerts depending on what apps you're using and what services you're using. Maybe you're getting alerts for locations that aren't your own, and they might be coming from a National Weather Service office that isn't your kind of home base, if you will. Uh, and don't forget the National Weather Services, are, they're the ones that issue the tornado war warnings, severe thunderstorm warnings, flash flood warnings. We pass along that information uh, to you and add a lot, uh, I hope, of value uh, to those products, but they're the ones who are actually issuing those official products. Thanks for everyone. Uh, f thanks to everyone, I should say, for uh, sticking with us all week as we talk about Severe Weather Awareness Week. No doubt we're going to have some episodes of Severe Weather as we go through the next several months. We had a little mini episode yesterday with one severe thunderstorm warning and some hail uh, that moved through uh, parts of Mahoning County, Southern Trumbull, and into Southern Mercer and uh, Lawrence County. But in the meantime, severe weather is ongoing on this Friday evening, well away from our area. A couple of tornado watches still in, a, in effect down here. This is the rain that's coming our way later on tonight. So we're expecting a very busy evening in terms of severe weather along the lower Mississippi River Valley. Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Tennessee, into parts of Alabama eventually as well as we had through the overnight tonight. For us, so we are expecting rain and maybe a rumble of thunder to push in as we head through the overnight hours. It can rain in a pretty good clip for a few hours past midnight tonight. Most of us will sleep through this, but uh, you might hear some pretty loud pitter-patter <laughs> of raindrops on your uh, on your windows, and again, you might hear some thunder overnight. Now, tomorrow morning, as the weekend gets underway, it'll be blustery. The steadiest of the rain will be pushing away, and we'll get into more of a scattered shower regime for the rest of the morning. All right, let's talk about the wind on our Saturday. This is going to be a, a, a big ticket item. Uh, we haven't had a wind event like this in a little while. 
Uh, already in the morning, the wind will be locally gusty, 30 to 35, but it's the afternoon that we're more concerned about some wind gusts in the 50 to 55 mile per hour range. And uh, for good reason, our entire viewing area is under a wind advisory uh, for the afternoon especially. Now, it's going to be windy in general. Also a possibility tomorrow, and we talked about this last evening, how the Storm Prediction Center might go ahead and issue uh, a, a low-end risk of severe weather. You're going to see a show that we're going to show this graphic a lot in the coming months. We we like to put uh, numbers on our severe weather risk scale because the terms can be slightly confusing, slight enhanced, things like that, uh, marginal. Uh, but numbers tend to work better for more people. And the darker green, that's a one on that one to five scale. They did kind of upgrade our area this afternoon to that one level one risk of damaging wind gusts tomorrow. And while it's going to be windy in general, any thunder shower that does manage to get going early in the afternoon could have a quick burst of wind that, uh, you know, is kind of a bonus wind, if you will, uh, independent of just the general windy weather we're going to have during the second half of the day. Also not going to be able to rule out an isolated tornado uh, tomorrow. I've been talking about this for a few days now. There's a lot of wind shear tomorrow. In addition to all the wind speeds that we'll be encountering down here at the surface, up above our heads, the wind is changing directions and speed rapidly with height. And that's called wind shear. And when you uh, can tap into some of that wind shear, you have maybe a, a low end risk of a, an isolated tornado. It's not something that uh, most of us are going to have to worry about and maybe it won't happen at all anywhere. But I can't rule out at this point an isolated tornado somewhere in eastern Ohio and western PA early to mid-afternoon on Saturday. So the warm front pushes through in the morning. The sun probably tries to come out before the morning is through and temperatures will shoot up into the 60s. Now, we're going to rewind this to right about here, about 2, 3 in the afternoon. You'll notice our model does not have much activity on it. But any of this right here uh, could produce an isolated tornado because it's going to be tapping into some of that wind shear. Otherwise, it's going to be already getting pretty windy and the wind gusts will peak mid to late afternoon. Then the front rolls through. The wind slowly diminishes through the evening. Clouds will then break for sunshine on Sunday, a much better day on Sunday. But we have added a chance for rain back into our Monday forecast with this quick moving system pushing in on Monday. Some showers probably around midday and into the afternoon. If you're looking for a true spring, this is not really your forecast for the next uh, couple of weeks. Yeah, we're going to shoot up into the 60s tomorrow, but that's the exception. The rule will be generally kind of a ho-hum temperature pattern um, with plenty of chances for precipitation, I think, over the next couple of weeks and no big abnormal warm-ups more than just a day here and there, probably through at least the first week of April. All right, that'll do it for me tonight. Thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks on this Friday evening and all week long. I hope everyone has a great weekend. Get ready for possible scattered power outages tomorrow afternoon, and we'll uh, see you back here on Monday.